Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, localization of third nerve palsy. Localization of third nerve palsy, cranial nerves part 35, ocular motor nerves part 21. So localization of third cranial nerve palsy. We'll talk about first the individual nerve palsies. 25% of cases are idiopathic. 25% of cases are idiopathic and of these 50% recover spontaneously. 25% of cases are idiopathic and of these 50% recover spontaneously. Microangiopathic vascular disease because of diabetes or hypertension is the most common etiology of non-traumatic third and sixth nerve palsies. Now let's talk about the localization of oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve. Differentiating benign ischemic palsies, that is the pupillary sparing from those due to aneurysms, pupillary involvement is important. What is this pupillary sparing and pupillary involvement third nerve palsies? Imagine there is a compressive lesion like an aneurysm. It will affect the superficially placed parasympathetic pupillary fibers first. So any compressive lesion like aneurysm or herniation will affect the superficially parasympathetic pupillary fibers first and therefore there will be pupillary involvement. On the contrary, at the other end of the spectrum, ischemic lesions of the third nerve like diaptes will affect the center of the third nerve and therefore it will spare the superficially placed parasympathetic pupillary fibers. So ischemic third nerve lesions like diaptes are sometimes known as pupillary sparing third nerve palsies. So differentiating benign ischemic palsies that is diaptes which is very benign from those due to aneurysms which are malignant, they are dangerous, pupillary involvement is very very important. In addition to pupillary sparing, the most helpful clinical feature distinguishing ischemic from mechanical compressive lesion is aberrant reinnervation. Aberrant reinnervation is seen in compressive lesions, example aneurysm and head trauma. So the two important findings which differentiates a compressive third nerve palsy from an ischemic third nerve palsy are one in compressive third nerve palsy pupillary fibers are the first to get affected and compressive lesions usually produce aberrant reinnervation what is aberrant reinnervation a muscle which has to be specifically supplied by, by a branch of the third nerve may get another branch of the third nerve so this is known as aberrant reinnervation. Conditions that mechanically disrupt the nerve may result in regenerating sprouts growing into the wrong tubes and in eventually innervating some structure other than the one originally intended. Example, example of reinnervation, fibers originally innervating the medial rectus may innervate the levator palpebrae superioris. So when the person is trying to adduct, the levator palpebrae superior also contracts and therefore there will be eyelid opening. So this is known as aberrant reinnervation. So two important points, compressive lesions, pupillary fibers are affected and aberrant reinnervation is seen only in compressive lesion, not in an ischemic third nerve lesion. So these are very, very important points. Juan's syndrome, it is caused by aplasia of 6th nerve palsy, 6th nerve nucleus as occurs in Mobius syndrome but accompanied by anomalous innervation of lateral rectus by 3rd nerve. So generally lateral rectus is innervated by 6th nerve but if there is an aplasia of the 6th nerve nucleus, the lateral rectus gets innervated by 3rd nerve. So the patient is unable to abduct the eye and abduction induces co-contraction of the lateral rectus 
causing retraction of the globe into the orbit. So generally lateral rectus, lateral rectus is innervated by 6th nerve, but if the 6th nerve nucleus is a, a there is an A place of 6th nerve nucleus like Mobius syndrome, the lateral rectus also gets innervated by the 3rd nerve. So medial rectus is innervated by the 3rd nerve. Now lateral rectus which is supposed to get innervated by 6th nerve gets innervated by the 3rd nerve because of the A place of 6th nerve nuclei and therefore when the 3rd nerve nucleus, when the 3rd nerve, when we try to contract the medial rectus abduct, abduction, there is also lateral rectus co uh, contraction causing abduction and therefore both abduction and abduction gets affected, gets, uh, gets is seen and therefore it results in retraction of the globe. So co-contraction of the agonist and antagonist, that is co-contraction of the medial rectus and lateral rectus causes retraction of the globe. So the misdirection syndrome typically emerges after about three months after the inciting event. Aberrant re-innervation does not occur after ischemic or idiopathic third nerve palsy. Aberrant re-innervation does not occur after ischemic or idiopathic third nerve palsy. So aberrant re-innervation is seen only in a compressive third nerve palsy. Uncle herniation and posterior communicating artery aneurysm are the common causes of third nerve palsy. Localization of oclomotor nerve lesions. The cranial nerve third nerve palsy can occur because of lesions anywhere along its course from the oclomotor nucleus in the midbrain to the orbit. Now let's see what happens if there are third nerve nuclear lesions. Because of the contra lateral innervation of the superior rectus, a nuclear lesion may cause weakness of the contralateral superior rectus. So there is a lot of difference between a nuclear lesion and the third nerve peripheral peripheral third nerve palsy. In a nuclear lesion what happens? Because of the contralateral innervation of the superior rectus, a nuclear lesion may cause weakness of the contralateral superior rectus. And then the involvement of the caudal central subnucleus may cause bilateral ptosis because both the levator palpebra superioris are supplied with a single central caudal subnucleus. So in the third nerve nuclear lesion, there is a contralateral superior rectus involvement and bilateral ptosis. Unusual third nerve palsies are typically acute, painful and involve the pupil. Patients with ischemic palsies are typically older than those with aneurysms because it is because of diabetes and hypertension. Therefore, patients with ischemic third nerve palsies are usually older than those with aneurysms. Microvascular third nerve palsies are of sudden onset, painful and may spare the pupil but begin to resolve by about two months and doesn't result in aberrant re -innervation. So, the ischemic or microvascular third nerve palsies like diabetes may present suddenly but they usually resolve after about two months and they as I said will not result in aberrant regeneration. Aberrant regeneration is seen only in a compressive third nerve palsy. Traumatic third nerve palsy may cause uncle herniation, causing dilated pupil, Hutchinson pupil or causing compression of the contralateral cerebral peduncle causing a false localizing hemiparesis ipsilateral to the lesion known as Carnohan's knot syndrome. So when there is uncle herniation, it goes and compresses the third nerve which is present in the midbrain. Parasympathetic, superficially parasympathetic pupillary fibers are the first to get affected. Therefore, pupil on one side will get dilated, the other side pupil will be normal. So this is known as Hutchison's pupil. The uncle herniation may sometimes go and compress the contralateral cerebral peduncle. So contralateral corticospinal tract gets affected and therefore there may be hemiparesis ipsilateral to the herniation what we call as Carnohan's not syndrome. Cavernous sinus disease, very peculiar about cavernous sinus disease. There are a few peculiar and unique points about cavernous sinus disease. Cavernous sinus disease usually affects other structures in addition to third nerve, but mononeuropathy may occur. We have the third nerve, fourth nerve, sixth nerve, first division of the fifth nerve, internal carotid artery, all structures are present in the cavernous sinus. So cavernous sinus disease usually affect other structures also in addition to third nerve but mononeuropathy may also occur. It is important in the evaluation of a complete third nerve palsy to be sure that fourth nerve is intact 
by having the patient attempt to look down and medially and look for a slight intorsion movement best appreciated by observing the conjunctival blood vessels if the third nerve pulse is accompanied by involvement of the fourth cranial nerve the likelihood of cavernous sinus disease is high so if both the third nerve and fourth nerve gets affected the lesion may be in the cavernous sinus so when the third nerve is affected how do we know that the fourth nerve is affected or not we look for the intorsion of the superior oblique which is because of the fourth nerve so we have to look for the conjunctal blood vessels and then see whether there is intorsion or not lesions in the anterior cavernous sinus may selectively involve one of the divisions a superior division of the third nerve palsy causes stosis and impairment of up gaze because levator palpebris superioris and superior rectus are supplied by the superior division of the third nerve whereas an inferior division of the third nerve third nerve palsy causes medial and inferior rectus weakness and pupillary dysfunction lesions involving the cranial third nerve in the apex of the orbit often involve the second nerve as well and may cause proptosis so if the apex of the orbit is involved the second nerve also may get involved so these are all the fascinating concepts of the localization of the third nerve i hope you have enjoyed listening to this uh, localization of the third nerve uh, video uh, the other important concepts of neurology i have put in a question and answer format in a book called focus neurology written by me dr s srinivas it is available online from all the leading booksellers all over the world especially amazon if interested it could be bought online if you have really enjoyed listening to the video localization of the third nerve palsy please share the link like and please do subscribe to my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye